Hello, welcome back to DCS Debriefer. Before we get started on this video about offensive BFM fundamentals, a standard disclaimer, I'm not a fighter pilot. These presentations are not authoritative. They're information inferred from my own experience in real aviation, where it's relevant, a directly referenced official but open source literature, and anecdotal information from former fighter pilots who I happen to know. It's presented for critique and to add to the overall body of information on the topic of air combat in simulation games like DCS. Like many tactics, techniques and procedures, application differs in key areas between the game and real life. And as such, these presentations are only relevant to the game. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's get started with offensive BFM. First of all, in this video, we're going to look at some fundamentals. I know I promised there'd be some shooting in this video. I'll promise I'll put some uh, shooting over top of what I'm saying, but we do need to cover some fundamentals before we get started on uh, shooting each other down, okay? So it's worth talking here about the nature of BFM and combat aviation in general. For virtual pilots like us, it's a game that we play in the comfort of our own home and perhaps with a beer among friends. BFM in real life is incredibly rare for good reason. It's the air warfare equivalent of a bayonet fight and once engaged in, at least one human being is almost certain to die. Even a minor mistake can bring that about in fractions of a second. And so it should be self-evident that there are huge differences in application between the game and the real world when it comes to BFM. Virtual pilots are free to take risks that real pilots would never dream of exposing themselves to in the pursuit of entertainment, fantasy, fun, call it whatever you want. Whereas if a pilot is engaging in BFM, they're doing so with one thing in mind, and that's to kill their opponent and survive. Why do I mention this? Well, it's not just me talking up actual fighter pilots, believe me. The lack of jeopardy in the game context means your opponent will be much harder to intimidate and deter, and this increases the role of luck in any outcome. Much like with poker, it makes inexperienced players generally easier to beat, but broadly less predictable. They will be likely to commit to hopeless situations. However, paradoxically, this increases the risk that they pose to experienced players, because it means that you, I'm assuming you're an experienced player, will be involved in more dogfights. And however statistically unlikely the outcome, if you play enough hands, you will inevitably lose. So the aim of this series of videos is to reduce the role of luck in your virtual within visual range engagements as much as possible, to increase your ability to make sound tactical decisions when offensive within visual range, and to be able to identify your errors so that you understand where to focus your practice. Everything that was discussed in the Foundation series will be implemented in this series and the series that follows on defensive BFM. By the end of this presentation, you'll be able to understand the definitions that underpin offensive BFM techniques, understand the tenets of offensive BFM, and have the necessary foundation knowledge to understand future videos in this series. The variables involved in BFM are almost infinite. One of my subscribers, thank you very much and thank you to all my subscribers, I genuinely can't believe that that many people are interested in watching these videos, has asked me to produce a video detailing which fights suited which types of fighter. I'm afraid this is an impossible task, as factors such as weather, rules of engagement, loadout, phase of flight and mission objectives are few among many that will influence your decisions. But for this reason, these videos cannot be an outcome-based play-by-play of all the various permutations of air combat. Instead, they aim to teach fundamentals that are true in most, if not all, situations. This way you can apply the fundamentals in your practice risk-free, learn and develop your own tactics that suit your favourite aircraft, risk appetite, mission set and more. There will be mission downloads available throughout this series, but none that are specific to this video, and I promise I am working on those downloads. I'm also working on a Discord channel. Uh, it's just fitting uh, this stuff in between uh, real life and family. So, as always, we'll start with definitions. We love definitions. Vertical 3 to 9 line. Okay, we talked about 3 to 9 line previously. If you haven't seen that, go back to the fundamentals video discussed at length there. The vertical 3 to 9 line is an extension of the 3 to 9 line into the vertical plane, but without regard to the lift vector, and it's aligned instead with the weight vector. It applies specifically in a rolling scissors, a manoeuvre in which both aircraft are using both pitching and rolling manoeuvres to attempt to retain or gain an offensive position, primarily using the vertical. As we saw in the turning fundamentals video, gravity plays a large part in influencing each fighter's turn rate and radius in the vertical. I don't want to steal my own sandwiches from later videos, but for this reason, during a rolling scissors, absolute nose position is less relevant to gauging advantage or disadvantage than is each aircraft's positioning downrange, 
and it is downrange travel that this manoeuvre attempts to reduce in order to flush the bandit out ahead. Therefore, the vertical 3-9 line becomes the most relevant means of judging who is the defender and whom the attacker. Line of sight rate. Line of sight rate is the rate at which an aircraft is moving across the field of vision of another, or the rate at which angle off nose or angle off tail are changing. This is unrelated to turn rate, as line of sight rate will vary even between two aircraft passing each other straight and level, but with horizontal displacement. Line of sight rate is an important cue, more on BFM cues later, to judge when you are entering a bandit's bubble. However, it's not the only one. Turning room. Turning room exists between two aircraft where there is space between them that one or both could use to reduce their angular BFM problem. Lateral separation is the simplest example of turning room, which could be exploited by either aircraft. While vertical turning room might be unavailable to one or the other if one has too much speed to make the corner without flying into the terrain, or if another has insufficient speed to manoeuvre in the vertical. These are both examples of exclusive use turning room, and I've talked about that in previous videos. So let's talk about the tenets of offensive BFM. There are three. The first is to kill the bandit as quickly as possible. Despite what movies like Top Gun, other flying films are available, would have you believe, the aim of BFM is not to fly close behind the enemy weaving backwards and forwards. The longer you are engaged, the longer your attention is solely focused on your target and the greater your broader SA will be decreasing. Also, the greater the chance that you'll make a mistake and get yourself killed, the lower your fuel state will become, etc. Generate a killing opportunity, exploit it and escape the bayonet fight. Tenet number two, stay offensive. For as long as you are offensive, the bandit will have to react to your moves and will be limited in what they can do to influence the outcome. For that reason, all the time you're not actually killing the bandit, you should at least be maintaining an offensive position. Again, in real life the risks are high, with your life hanging in the balance, so there's no sense in the risk of becoming defensive in exchange for a speculative shot. Remaining offensive will put pressure on the bandit and generate other opportunities. The final tenet, if neutralised, transition to high aspect BFM. We haven't talked about high aspect BFM yet and I'm not going to here, that'll come later, but this final tenet goes along with the mantra of never give up. If you lose the offensive advantage you must quickly decide on a game plan to reacquire it. You can't live life in the past and wish yourself back into a winning position. Recognise that you've lost the offensive, quickly assess the bandit's advantages and disadvantages and try to drive the fight into his weaknesses and your strengths. This will be something to discuss in a section on high aspect BFM is a fair few videos away yet. So in conclusion, and I understand this is a short video and so I will try to get the next one out as quickly as possible, these definitions aren't only to help you understand future videos. Gauging vertical 3 to 9 line, line of sight rate and turning room will all take practice. You will need to not only understand them but also identify them rapidly as they will provide vital but fleeting cues for critical decisions and actions. The more you practice recognising the cues, the better and quicker will be your decisions, but when you make mistakes, and you will make mistakes, the tenets of minimising time to kill, staying offensive, and transitioning to high aspect BFM if neutralised will help to generate options and opportunities to win back time and position, and try again. Thanks very much again for coming back to this series and my channel. If uh, you feel like I've earned your subscription, then please do subscribe. But more importantly than that, get yourself into the game, go and practice, and go and see if you can generate some problems that we can look at solving later on. Thanks very much. I'll see you soon.